It's been described as a publicity-seeking scam, but backers of the Mars One mission are adamant they will establish a colony on the Red Planet in 2027. The Dutch firm, Mars One wants four astronauts to land on Mars every two years in the mid-2020s, steadily increasing the settlement's size. Today they revealed 100 candidates on the shortlist to establish a human colony on the planet Mars are to undergo tests as part of a new phase of the selection process to cut them down to just 40. Around 200,000 hopefuls from 140 countries initially signed up for the Mars One project, which is to be partly funded by a television reality show about the endeavor. This has been whittled down to 100 people. After the five-day third phase of tests, it will be trimmed further to 40, of whom 24 will eventually be chosen for the one-way trips to the Red Planet, scheduled to start in 2026. Mars One said the latest tests, 90% of which are those used by NASA, will be done in teams. Over the course of five days, candidates will face various challenges, the Dutch-based non-profit organization said in a statement. It will be the first time all candidates will meet in person and demonstrate their capabilities as a team. In this round the candidates will play an active role in decision-making, group formation. Mars One has asked the candidates to group themselves into teams with the people they believe they can work well with. As they will not be returning to Earth, those selected must be capable of living in small groups, finding water, producing oxygen and growing their own food. Unlike NASA's plans to go to Mars, these astronauts will only be offered a one-way ticket, and they'll need to survive by any means possible. In a recent video, the company asks some of the mission hopefuls to discuss how willing they would be to become cannibals in order to survive. If you were running low on food, would you consider eating on of your fellow mass retronauts? The video asks. Sue Ann from Los Angeles says, no, that would be, like. Would you consider eating your mum or dad if you were in a famine? No, we'd have to work together to figure it out. Unless the person died already of natural causes. I don't know, that would be weird. Pietro from Trieste in Italy had a similar reaction, humans have a complex relationship with death. Personally, without any hope of supply, knowing that we will die of starvation anyway, I'd prefer to leave my fellows in peace. Mido from Cairo begins by saying that he will be a vegetarian on Mars. But the curious part of me would be, I wonder what do they taste like? He added. I'm going to be tempted, but no, I'm not going to do it. The Mars One project plans to launch a supply mission to land on Mars as soon as October 2016. A settlement rover will then land in 2020. The landing systems will be tested eight times before they are used to transport humans, a move that Mars One said will make the trips much safer than moon missions. The group said it aims to have a human settlement on Mars by 2027. Journey time to Mars Which is approximately 40 million miles away depending on its position in orbit, would be around 200 days. Earlier this year, the Mars One project whittled down its shortlist of candidates from 200,000 to just 50 men and 50 women. The chosen 100 include 33 from the US, 31 come from Europe, 16 from Asia, 7 from Africa and 7 from Australia. Chris Hadfield, former commander of the ISS, recently told El Mokib, writing in Medium that the mission may not deliver on this promise. There's a great, I don't know self-defeating optimism in the way that this project has been set up, Hadfield told Medium. I fear that it's going to be a little disillusioning for people, because it's presented as if for sure it's going to happen. In Demol, the production company behind Big Brother, said earlier last year it will be documenting the progress of the group of hopefuls as they compete for a 2025 ticket to the Red Planet. Candidates do not need to have any scientific qualifications and an audience vote will be used to make the final choice. Any chosen Mars settlers will then be required to dedicate eight years of their lives preparing for the 300 million mile pioneering mission. Igor Mitrofanov of the Space Research Institute at the Russian Academy of Sciences told the Voice of Russia that the largest risk is the huge amounts of radiation the volunteers will receive. Echoing Hadfield's concerns. He said he doubts that the volunteers for this trip know enough science and technology to take the risk.
The group had promised on its site that in 1,000 years, everyone on Earth will remember who the first humans on Mars were. A robotic lander and orbiter are scheduled to lift off in 2018, followed by a scouting rover in 2020 and six cargo missions in 2022. The firm recently revealed how it plans to whittle down their candidates from 100 to 40. It will hold five day of interviews and group tests will be used, and those left will be placed in isolation for nine days. The remaining 24 candidates will then be offered a contract to train, which the firm admits will take at least 10 years. We now have 100 candidates, and we have a process in place to trim this down to 24 people who will receive a formal full-time employment offer to train for the mission to Mars, the firm said. We will begin training the 24 Mars 1 candidates in teams of 4, and we expect to have 6 teams. Remember, only one team of 4 members will go on the first mission, so we will be screening until near to the end. This will be a long process since the training will last for at least 10 years. The project will first bring the final 100 together to self-select into 6 10 teams of 10 to 15 members. The next selection rounds will take place in September 2016.